Hi pals, it's me, RT, they them pronouns only, and this week I'm going to start actually talking to you about my med cam, which is what I'm mainly going to call it throughout this video, for reasons. My experience so far, and if I could do things differently, I knew about different resources first, I'm going to provide some here to make it easier for you in the UK. Alright, okay, so I have been on a bunch of different pain meds that's a whole couple of videos in itself i have tried and or been on duloxetine pr pregabalin um amitriptyline gabapentin i can't take non-steroidal anti-inflammatories because of my crohn's steroids obviously codeines different codeines liquid morphine and my GP has now run out of options for me to try. Gamapentin is the last thing. So having next to no support from my rheumatologist on this, I decided to go down the route of medical, medical cannabis. And that's the only time I will say it in this video because of, probably because of censorship, so medcan. <laughs> I've had a bit of an awful experience, to be honest. I think I got extremely unlucky with the timing, as well as just a lot of different issues with the process of trying to access this m medication. I tried looking at different clinics online first to work out which ones I thought was probably better. The main two I was looking at were Lever and Xerenia. There is also actually like a site where it compares all the ones available in the UK and they're sort of like main main information you need to know like consultation costs uh repeat prescription costs initial consultation costs because they're usually more um or swapping over consultation costs if you are already with a different clinic and then a lot of them have something to do as well with like the cost of product itself and what expenses you're looking at um, and I wish I had access to that a lot earlier, um, that would have helped me, but yeah, I will include a lot of links and references in the description of this video for your ease of access. Also just going to plug here, would really appreciate if you um, tip me on coffee for doing that, <laughs> if you find it useful, you know, because oh my god, it's been a nightmare for me um and it's it has unfortunately cost quite a lot i found out recently the costs are similar for going down um like gender affirming care <laughs> in the uk um so <laughs> my trans chronically ill friends i'm so sorry it's like a double whammy my dudes so my initial investigation i spoke to lever clinic on the phone they seemed really nice but they couldn't really give me a lot of specific details and being autistic as well as being someone who's completely naive to cannabis anyway i just really appreciate clear concise direct but also like quite detailed and informative information um and unfortunately there just really wasn't much of that on Lever's site nor could they give me much else um they just kind of go mm, it's oil or flour and you're like mm, thanks that means nothing to me <laughs> um so i kind of let it stew for a while then i ended up calling up serenia clinic because a friend of mine is with them and had a good as has has had a good experience and they were able to tell me a bit more information than Lever was um, Lever also had higher um, initial consultation fees. I can't remember if they had higher consultation fees generally, but they I don't think they charged for repeat prescriptions, whereas Zerenia does re charge for repeat prescriptions, but their other costs are a bit lower. So yeah, they were able to give me a lot more information. The one thing that made me feel a little bit like uncomfortable was that I didn't really see a lot of information being like specified about um contacting your um like gp or like other your nhs team 
um, from Leather. I had no idea that that was like a thing. Whereas Xerenia, it's kind of like you have to do that. Like you have to allow communication between everybody to happen. Um, so that was something that kind of made me lean towards using Xerenia so that I could feel, I don't know, it was, there was just something about the way that they were upfront about that information that made me feel like, oh, okay, this is, they're taking this shit seriously. And I asked for some resources to be sent to me that still have not been sent to me. This was in December of 2022, uh, like literally right at the end of December. I'm filming this early April. But there was more information on the website about how MedCan is supposed to work, which I found helpful and useful. So I did a bit more thinking about it, but I ended up going with Serenia. Um, it was an £80 initial consultation fee. Um, but I did ask a lot of questions initially of like, you know, is there anything else I need to provide? Is there anything else that I can do or anything else you can tell me to prepare for anything that might be coming up? But that's, as soon as I, as soon as I paid, everything went downhill and only, only is just possibly resolved. Um, and this was in mid January. Um, so yeah. And I've told them several times that they have to understand how dodgy it looks that as soon as I pay money, their communication turns to absolute shit. Looks really dodgy to me. Like someone told me that the payment link would come by email for a start, but then I got a text message and I did not feel comfortable with that because that's not what they told me. And also there's a lot of text message scams going around these days. I pay by bank transfer for the first payment which then nobody could find for two or three weeks. Um, I was sending maybe two or three emails a week asking for updates. I tried ringing them and couldn't get through to anybody. Um, I put myself down for like a callback on the contact form on the website. Um, I, I've literally gotten to the point where I was looking at their um, like cancellation and refund process because um, I would I'd just been ignored from that point for like three weeks and it's really unfortunate because when I do speak to somebody in their like customer service team or whatever it is admin team they're always really nice and they are always like usually very helpful but their emails are awful um, and that's my preferred mode of contact so I can like go back and look at stuff for reference uh, you get a lot of emails that are like obviously automatic emails but and they kept saying that my they hadn't seen my other emails so i then had to keep resending what i'd been asking in other emails and then i suddenly had an appointment ready with the pain specialist in a week's time at that point and i was like <laughs> what um i had a conversation before this with my GP about going through this process because I wanted to have that kind of conversation first to make sure that he was chill and happy to like assist with any documentation or whatever um so I was very lucky that yeah my GP was very chill about it um and also my IBD team have been quite chill too where they're just like yeah we don't really know a whole lot about that but go off <laughs> And like I have already done some research into the benefits of using MedCam for my conditions. Um, if I can find those resources as well, they will also be linked down below because I do find using um, and providing actual studies to medical team members to be beneficial, especially if they're like resistant to, to things generally or that you're just kind of concerned about that being a problem so far i've not had to really provide anything that that is the only luck i've had in this whole <laughs> med can journey so yeah I'd, he'd said it was fine and he would definitely provide whatever um so i got the appointment notification of in a week's time and i was like okay so you magically now have an appointment for me that i've been chasing you up for for three weeks 
with no information from you that apparently you've had booked in you've you've booked you've had it booked in for me the entire time but could not slash would not tell me for some reason so i think that's a lie i think it was total rubbish and i think i was just put in as a cancellation because it was something that i've been asking for ages along with can someone confirm that my payment has been received um and yeah that took a lot longer than it should have done um when i did speak to somebody on the phone she was one of the new like tra training trainee people um so she couldn't even check for me um so i just had to keep waiting and that's why i was like this close from just putting in a complaint and taking my money elsewhere and requesting a full refund but then when i got the appointment i was like okay we'll see what happens i did there's so many forms that aren't really explained very well um, and don't have a lot of helpful questions in them they also don't tell you what happens in the initial consultation um but that is also feedback i gave and they've added that to their list of things to possibly change so hopefully that will be different soon and i'll get more onto why that was frustrating later but um yeah i think there was three forms i had to fill in I can't remember exactly what they were either like I just they were just not great forms they weren't particularly informative one I think was for um my GP so to con like to contact my GP and ask for supporting evidence of all the stuff that I've already tried because there's obviously this list of things that you have to like criteria you have to meet to even be considered for medical cannabis um they usually discuss that first as well before you have to pay for anything there's the form that goes to my gp there was another form i can't remember what exactly it was i think it was maybe for the pharmacy slash dispensary um so my information and then i think the other one was uh the project 21 20, 2021 something like that which is a medcan thing that some some of the clinics do and some of them don't do but basically you get discounted rates on the product for filling in research surveys i highly recommend doing this if you can because oh my fucking god even with this discount i'm spending so much fucking money <laughs> i was then informed the day before my consultation that my GP hasn't provided enough evidence and I was like because you didn't fucking ask for, you didn't ask for anything specific <laughs> I then had to spend that entire afternoon finding my own stuff that I'd been asking if I could provide already for weeks and this is also almost all of this I'm saying is feedback I've given to them as well where I was just like that that was a piss take that I, I've been contacting you for weeks about if there's anything else that I can provide um, and it was always a no until the day before my appointment and unless I got these, this, these documents in on time my appointment the next morning could be cancelled so I had to wait for somebody to confirm that everything come through, come, had come through and was what they needed to even know if I was still having that appointment the next day and I was just I was fucking livid that was really bad then the appointment itself was also really bad um it seems like now I have access to um a medcan facebook group and um reddit thread what the fuck ever I don't really use reddit so I don't know what I'm talking about but now I have access to those I've seen that some people have had issues with uh a, the new the new consultant i don't i don't know necessarily how new he is anymore either but about him having some very strange responses to the patients he's seeing for pain management because he's a pain specialist about medcan um, and i saw these after i'd had my own dodgy experience so the reasons why the consults the consultation was not great anyway for me is that yeah i wasn't prepared had no idea what i was supposed to like expect 
how long for. So they're roughly like 15, maybe 20 minutes. And you have to go over stuff you've already provided again. The first question I was asked was, what, what is it that I need help with? So I wanted to try and give him a bit of my general story to explain how long I've been dealing with chronic pain for. Um, and I wanted to talk about the sleep issues too. Um, but unfortunately I was interrupted when I sort of got to saying, I'll, I've now been diagnosed with numerous different conditions that can cause pain. So I didn't really get to fully explain anything any of my experiences, any of my types of pain either, because I was interrupted and told to go through the list, which could have waited till after I was done, because I would have gotten to it eventually, but also I wanted to have a generalized, hey, this is my history of pain and conditions, and this is why I'm now here. I also had to go through all of my meds I'm currently on, and I had to go through all the meds that I've tried all the painkillers I'd tried and I wasn't prepared for either of those things because both of those lists are long um so I feel like I wasted a lot of time just by trying to remember all the meds I'm on when he definitely had a list and then when we got to talking about he he asked why I decided to go this route and I said well I'd done some research that shows Medcan has a lot of positive effects on a lot of my conditions um but also I don't have e I don't know if I actually said this to be honest I don't know if I was able to but I I either wanted to or did say about my veins not being great so that the other options I'd looked at um for private pain management were mostly things that would involve IV slash infusions. Yeah, I think I mentioned that in a video a while ago where I looked at um, lidocaine infusions and ketamine infusions and other kind of crazy wild things like um, oxygen therapy. And um, I was trying to see if I could access the nasal ketamine spray as well. But yeah, so <laughs> this one seems the least terrifying to be honest and the one that's least like, likely to cause me more problems with my veins and then when we actually got on to talking about the the products they provide the consultant kind of just went straight into we don't like to prescribe flour which is the vape um because of the stigma around vaping medcam and that was a red flag I mean, there were a few red flags already because he interrupted me and wasn't super like nice or accommodating. But this one was like a major red flag, major red, red, major red flag. Because if you are bothered by stigma for drugs that you are prescribing people privately, why are you doing this job? You know, it really felt like, but like people who do that really feel like they are there just to deny people life-changing medical care and steal your money at the same time. Um, so I felt pushed into the direction of having to go for the oil, even though I wasn't keen because I was worried that I wouldn't get care otherwise, pretty much. <laughs> He didn't say how much it was going to cost me. There was no other communication about it. There was no uh, further information about legality of things. Yeah, it's... I just kind of was so overwhelmed and knocked off my feet from that appointment, but also the weeks and weeks of complete shit that I've been through, that I just went, okay, okay sure because i do understand that the reasons why they might prescribe oil first or preferably is because it's um it lasts longer than vaping um and is helpful for sleeping and doesn't have really many if any of those sort of like effects that make you 
high or anything like that. So when the appointment was over, I waited <laughs> to be contacted by the prescribing people. I was not. This was another thing I had to then chase. I think the pharmacy was cure relief and I've also seen bad experiences, like pretty consistently bad experiences with cure relief on the Reddit threads and stuff. They're supposed to contact you first with all the information. So you can send your photo ID and make payment and you know, all those sorts of things. Um, so I sent them all the information they needed from me and I should have heard within a couple of days about them processing the prescription and I didn't. So I then had to get someone in Serenia to chase for me, which they did and they found it out and got it pushed on. But basically they just hadn't bothered to process my prescription for some reason or contact me because they tell you to keep an eye on your spam folder. There was nothing in it. Nobody had contacted me. Then when they did contact me, the cost of this oil made me shit my pants. <laughs> and nobody had mentioned the price of this until then. And also depending, like I had, I had no concept at the time either for the size of this bo bottle or what my dose would be every day. So I generally had no idea how to feel. I started to have pretty much a meltdown every time something went wrong with these people because I was just struggling so much to get anything to work, to go. Um, and I explained to them later on that I, you know, I've used all of my self-advocacy techniques that I've learned and picked up for NHS services and none of them worked with you. <laughs> none of them worked with any of you because you were just ignoring me. <laughs> so it, yeah, it's it's been bad. It's been really bad. But I got to the point where I was just like, I can't, I don't even know if I could deal with it mentally if I could, if I changed clinic. Especially at, like not until at least I got my first prescription. The price, as I said, had not been disclosed with me, either the original price or the discounted price. So I was like, hi, can someone fucking tell me, is this the, is this with the discount? A hundred and fifty pounds. That was with the discount. Apparently it's usually like 260. Mental illness. Let me show you the little bottle I got. I'm trying to work out so I don't dox myself. Like I don't know if you can see. I'm roughly halfway through, it's somewhere around here. Wanna see the applicator? This is a nightmare. Fucking hate this guy. I'll get to that. So, so, so. Yeah, found out, yes, that's the discounted rate. I passed away, but it was all being processed. I was like, hey, I've paid for it now. I'm ready. Um, I will say the only upside so far has been that all of the payments I've made, I can claim on Shopix shopping app for points towards gift cards. <laughs> I then got a call from Cure Relief, like telling me that the only bottle they have available was this one that I got, by the way, with a short expiration date sometime like towards the end of April. Do I want that one? Or do I want a smaller bottle that will cost me more? Or do I want to wait until they just get something else in with an unknown wait time? Um, also for reference, Cure Relief apparently makes everything, like has and makes everything on site to then post. And they did, they had one bottle left. So I said, I don't fucking know. <laughs> I didn't swear, but like, I'm going to him because I'm so mad. But I was like, I don't fucking know, my dude. I have never had shit from you. <laughs> this is my first prescription. I have no idea. 
but I just, I have no idea. And they looked at my file and went, oh yeah, you are a new patient. I was like, yeah, maybe you should have read that first and maybe not s s fucking called me. Maybe you should have spoken to somebody else. Because I feel like that was not my job. That should have been Zerenia or the consultant's job to do that. So I went, I will just take the bottle because it's what I've been prescribed and I would just like to fucking start this medication because it's all been delayed for months. <laughs> so I started this, I think around May 10th, March 10th, same, in the future, March 10th. I've not even been on it for a month yet, my dudes. But it's been a fucking nightmare. It arrived. I wanted to KMS because of the size of this fucking bottle. The applicator is terrible. It get, it's, it's just permanently stuck. Like I'm pretty sure that's not supposed to be a thing with like un unused syringes. Like you see that, right? You see like how not smooth that is. So my dose, my initial dose, oh my God, was literally that. Just that once a day for five days. And then it was two of those onwards. My first dose, literally, as I tried to squirt this because you do it under your tongue, splashed out of my mouth and went everywhere. But also, it says on the um, label for this that you shake well before use. What I've learned, don't fucking shake it with the cap on. When you take the cap off, it's got a little hole that's like the perfect size for the syringe. I now put my finger over this hole to shake because you only get a little bit on your finger, but if you shake it in the cap, this is what's been happening, is that it gets all inside the cap and leaks everywhere. So I'm sure I've lost a lot of fucking expensive product from just a really bad cap. It's like literally everywhere. And like, I have all of my old like bits of cloth that I've been using with it to just keep everything clean. And it just goes everywhere. So I'm just like, is it really worth it? Um, and my mate with Serenia, not only were they fucking shocked and appalled at my experience, but they were also so like, they had no idea why the product I'm on costs so much money. Because whatever they're taking is a lot cheaper. Um, and with my new dose that was suggested is 0 0.5 instead of 0 0.3 twice a day. That would be this gone in a month. And that's 150 fucking pounds, my dudes. And someone said to me a while ago, who wasn't like, it was part of the clinic, a clinical like admin team that maybe I would benefit anyway from a combined therapy because my particular needs are varied and may just benefit from a combination of things <laughs> being done. But at the moment, I'm trying to take it slow. Like I said, I've not been on it for a full month. Um, however, they did tell me that I had to book in my next consultation within four weeks of the previous one. It took so long to get my medication. I had to get the appointment moved because I wouldn't, if you, I wouldn't have even had the product for a start or I would have only had it for maybe a week. So I had the second appointment as well and he was much nicer. So I think he's been spoken to and he was open to the possibility of me starting vape slash flower. He was also, he didn't tell me to up the dose. I said, do you suggest or recommend a dose change? And you said, oh, you can up it to 0 0.5 twice a day instead. So yeah, that's the experience so far. I did have a very long conversation on the phone with um, one of the staff at Zerenia, who is also now going to be like my, the person I, for the attention of my emails to, because I've just had enough of different people responding to me and not having useful answers because they have they just don't have any idea who I am or what's going on um so again she was very lovely and I really appreciated her I appreciate the customer service they have there they do actually apologize for the shit that they 
fuck up because I went through all this with them and they were like yeah it really sounds like you've just gotten so unlucky at every single turn and we are so sorry because that doesn't normally happen I'm like thank you I feel at least seen and I feel uh, like you give enough of a shit <laughs> to take some notes and try and do something it had been elevated to a complaint without me even asking because i ended up sending an email being like i'm at the end of my fucking rope with this this is completely ridiculous everything that's been happening i'm honestly fed up i kind of want to go to a different clinic because of how awful this has all been they have also got an investigation open for that consultant i don't know whether it's just to talk to him or just to gather everything together or what but that they've also taken some of my feedback on board for things that they can change like what to expect from the consultations um i also said to them that these are fucking shit so if you want to tell cure relief that and you know i told them about cure relief being fucking stupid calling me um a first time patient what do i want to do about the medication i've never had before can't even like pro like compartmentalize or understand what I'm getting or what I'm supposed to be doing with it. <laughs> After all of that, how's it going for me? I don't know. <laughs> I think it's helping in some ways. Um, I have definitely had better sleep when I haven't been having flare ups. It, I think it is helping. I think it's one of those things that takes uh, takes time and it needs time to build up in your system as well and time for you to work out when is the best when and how is the best way to consume take your medication i'm still working out the best time in the evening and the best sort of like dose whether i take it in two separate doses or one or or what um currently i'm gonna wait for the next couple of months i'll have to buy another one of these either way in that time to see if that alone is helping but i did mention in that last consultation that it didn't really do anything when i was in a flare-up that isn't sort of like my baseline chronic pain problems um that maybe something else would be beneficial as well so maybe the next time i have a consultation we will discuss that um possibly going on or starting flower for vaping and then we'll maybe see about managing that balance as well between the oil and vaping what will benefit my particular needs so yeah i haven't seen miracles yet but i i think it's doing something yeah <laughs> not to put people off because i think it's important to be able to access different options for medical care um so if this is your next preferred approach here are different things for you to learn from that can possibly be happening that might be really fucking sucky to try and deal with as i said i will give you all my resources that i have found so far and have found useful and would have found useful when i was starting another reminder of my coffee because as i said this stuff is fucking expensive and i want to chaos I had to replace my phone recently too so fuck my life for more on how the actual medication is going i will update probably in a few months time i think it will take maybe at least three if not more to like get more of a gauge on how i'm actually feeling about it and how it's actually responding to me um and i'll sort of let you know if anybody else is not super happy about me doing this because i haven't spoken to my rheumatologist since doing this so <laughs> um but everyone else seems fine so we'll see yeah let me know in the comments if you're also doing this what your experiences have been because that was the other thing in my research i then decided to just get so overwhelmed after having all this shitty like experiences so far that actually everywhere has a very very like high 50 50 chance of a good or a bad experience it seems in the reddit threads particularly i noticed that pretty much every single place had a lot of really good or really bad experiences um and sometimes it's just throwing your balls and hoping something happens that's kind of what i'd already done so i just i'm 
just letting it play out, you know? Again, as an autistic and adhd -er, it can be really, really difficult to make those decisions when everybody's experiences are so mixed. Um, but also, adhd is on stimulants, anyone on stimulants, apparently CBD specifically can have the, a similar effect that orange or citrus products have on your stimulants and it can stop them from working so you can't take them at or near the same time. I tend to try and take my Medcaran oil in the afternoons, especially definitely in the evenings before bed because um, yeah like I said in many of my videos, uh, pardon me, I have a lot of pain insomnia um, and it, I feel like this has been at least helping a little bit with the taking that edge off and letting me sleep pretty decently until I got sick so <laughs> until I picked up a virus and I can, can't breathe from my nose um so I'm just always I keep waking up because I just can't breathe but that's I think that's everything I've got so far leave a like leave your comments down below algorithm things support a small creator please help me make this pay me because oh my god poor bitches in the UK <laughs> pain management is fucking bullshit <laughs> If there's anything that I didn't mention, definitely ask in the comments as well. I'll happily like share more and add it to like the next video I make on this. Um, subscribe to my channel if you want to see me more or if you want to be notified when I do make the update down the line. Yeah, that's it from me this week. I... I'm gonna go lay down. <laughs> I'm, a little, I'm, a little bit, I'm a little bit tired. <laughs> I don't know <up> today. <laughs> I've been really busy this week, like the last week, so... This is my week off where I just kind of do a little bit less than the week before. I also had to replace my glasses lenses, so that was another bill, so. Buy my art if you're UK based because I have lots of art that needs to be sold and I need to pay my bills. Thanks XXO, I'll see you next week, bye. <laughs>